I want to share with you briefly they limited the Holy Spirit. They limited, King James says, the Holy One of Israel. They limited God. That's the topic. They limited God. You know, as a child of God, it's very important for you not to limit the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. Right in this scripture, in verse 41, glory to God, the Bible tells us that, yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Now, when you study the King James Bible, the only place, there's only one time the word limited was used in the Bible, in the King James Bible. There's only one scripture that that word was used, and that is this scripture. There's no other place in the New Testament and the Old Testament in the King James Bible where the word limited was used. And when the scripture used the word limited here, it's not just about stopping God in doing something. The Hebrew word means to cause pain. The Hebrew word for the word limited there means to cause pain. To cause pain, to cause trouble, to wound somebody. To injure somebody. So when the Bible says they limited God, he said, yeah, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. When a child of God is limiting God, it's like causing God pain. It's like wounding God. It's like injuring God. It's like causing God trouble. I'm going to think about the children of Israel because that's their story you see in Psalm 78, think about the children of Israel in Psalm 78, and they go through their history. See how they cause God trouble. God promised, give them a promised land, and the journey is just 11 days. 11 days, they could have possessed the land, but it took 40 years. I mean, if you're a man, and this work is supposed to be done for, 40, for 11 days, and you have to spend 40 years to do the work that could have cost you 11 days. And so, in that 40 years, God, God was so tired of them, you know. So when the Bible said they limited the Holy One of Israel, it's talking about causing pain, to, in, to cause to wounds. It means to cause trouble. To cause trouble. And, and this is so important in you know, when we study the word of God, God's purpose in a, a child of God's life can be frustrated by that child of God. It can be frustrated. Maybe you are participating and watching around, around the world and you might not know that you are limiting the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life by some things that you do and by that, you are causing pain to God. God look at his children by this time they should be reigning in life. They should be flourishing in life. They should be excelling in life. But now, they limited the Holy One. God said, they, God said they limited me. There are things I want to do for them. There are purposes of God that need to be established in our lives. And, and, and God has already finished everything. Now, by his spirit, he has to come back again and again and try to rescue this Christian, rescue this brother, rescue this sister, rearrange his life, causing more trouble for God. They limited him. And when he caused God pain like that, it means also it causes the person pain as well. So, when you limit God, you actually limit yourself. When you limit the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life, you actually limit yourself. And this is what our Lord Jesus Christ says to us in the scripture when he was introducing the Holy Spirit to his disciples. We've been called into a life of glory and grace. 
When you look at your life as a child of God and you are not seeing consistent growth, consistent progress, you are not seeing consistent results, there is something wrong. Something is missing. You are limiting God. You are limiting the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. There are things that you are doing that is not allowing the ministry of the Holy Spirit to be evidence in your life. It is wrong for a child of God to be sick. It is wrong for a child of God to be poor. It is wrong for a child of God to fail in life. Anybody can tell you any other thing. They can say, well, sickness, you know, God wants to use sickness to train you. It's a lie. God doesn't want to use sickness to train anybody. The day you got born again, you were born with a new nature. You were born with a new life. You were born with the nature of God. The day you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your body became his temple. Your body became his house. He said, those that dwell there, those that dwell there shall not say, I am sick. In that city, they don't say, I am sick, because there is no sick person there. There is no feeble person there. Think about the children of Israel. When they left Egypt, the Bible said there was not one feeble person among them. Not one feeble person among them. So why did they die in the wilderness? God didn't bring them to the wilderness to die. Why did they die in the wilderness? Let's see a scripture in Numbers. Glory to God. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers 14. Numbers 14. This is when they went, Moses sent spies, 12 spies to to spy the promised land. They're just about to start the journey. And then they came back with evil reports, and the congregation began to, you know, began to make some noise and complain, and wanted to return back to Egypt. They are just about to start their journey of greatness. Sometimes you see the same thing being played out in the life of a Christian. Let's read number 14. Verse 10. But all the congregation based stone them with stones. They want to stone Moses and, and Joshua and Caleb. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. Verse 11 is where I want to see. And the Lord said unto Moses, The Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have shown among them. God said, how long will it take them to believe me? This is a great concern to God. He said, I've shown them a lot of signs. How long will it take them to believe? How long will it take them to believe me? God is so troubled about it. This thing pain God. You see, when you don't believe the word of God, when you don't believe the things that God says concerning you, it, 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 you limit him. And when you limit God, it means you, it, it pains him. See the way he, you know, he spoke here. He said to Moses, how long will these people provoke me? They are limiting God, he's provoking God. He said, how long will it be that they will believe me? How long will it take them to believe me? I mean, think about the things that God did for them. Uh, the, I'm going to say seven things that God did for them. Number one, they asked for deliverance in Egypt. The children of Israel asked for deliverance in bondage. And what did God give to them? God gave them Passover. See the amazing thing that God did for them. He gave them Passover. They asked for deliverance. He gave them Passover. The Passover night, an angel of death came and killed every firstborn. And nothing touched the children of Israel. <coughs> God is shocked that these people still don't believe me. Then they left Egypt and got to the Red Sea and Pharaoh was coming behind them and his army and they asked God for protection. And God gave them dry land, dried Red Sea. I mean, just think about it, if you are there and God opened the Red Sea for you. And they, they, they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. They asked God for safety from children of, from Egyptians, and God destroyed the Egyptians' army. God not only divided the Red Sea, God also destroyed the army. 
I mean, after seeing such signs and wonders, there should not be any doubt in you. But do you know it's the same today? They came out of the Red Sea. They don't know where to go. Just like a child of God. Doesn't know what to do with the next phase of his life. They ask God for direction from the Red Sea. Direct us to our inheritance. Direct us to our place of the place we are prepared for us. And what did God do? He gave them a pillar of cloud by night. A pillar of fire by night. And a pillar of cloud by day. To give them direction. And so they wake up every morning. They see this pillar on top of them. To give them direction. And that pillar was there for 40 years. They asked God for food. Wilderness. Say, are ah, we going to eat here? And then the next day, God gave them manna. Free food for 40 years. Come on now. I think by now, your faith should be very strong. Come on, talk to me now. By now, their faith should be very strong. I'm sharing with you, they limited God. They limited God. They didn't know who was doing those things. They asked for water to drink. God gave them the rock of Oreb. The rock at Oreb. A place called Oreb. And water came out. From a rock. Water came out from a rock that fed over 2 million Jew Jewish people. In fact, we were more than that. Think about water that will feed such a city coming out from a rock. And that water never run dry. There are things that you, a Christian will do that limit God. That pain God. Then they asked for flesh, for meat. And what did God do? He gave them quails. Number 14, verse 11 again. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have shown among them. We are here today, and I'm talking to God's people today. We have seen so many signs and wonders in our days. Look at what God is doing with our man of God, Pastor Chris, on healing streams, life healing services. We've seen the blind receive their sight. We've seen the deaf hear. We've seen the dumb, dumb, I mean, the dumb speak. We've seen the lame walk. We've seen manner of sicknesses disappear. We've seen two legs that are not balancing, one shorter than the other, or one longer than the other. They all balance. We've seen growth dematerialize. We've seen a young man that have lost 80% of his intestine and everything was, I mean, his health was completely restored. We've seen rhapsody of reality, a lunatic person reading rhapsody of reality and his, his sanity was restored. We've seen too many things in our ministry to doubt God. Lift up your hand before the Lord. There is a miracle for you tonight. Remove the limitation now. Look at, look at what Jesus Christ said to his disciples after his resurrection in Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16. In verse 14. When he was raised from the dead, that was the afterward Jesus appeared unto the eleven. Remember there were twelve? Judas Iscariot uh, at this time has committed suicide. The Bible says he appeared unto the twelve as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. He upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not. They believed not. Look at it. There. They believed not that what? They believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. They believed not. After the miracle they saw with Jesus, they still did not believe. And I'm going to be mentioning some points that you need to look at to not to limit God. You need to address those areas of your life. Now let's look at um, the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, 
chapter 24. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. I read to you verse 25. Jesus was talking to two, two people that was walking on the road. And he said unto them, O fools. Luke 24, verse 25. He said, O fools, and slow of heart to believe. All that the prophets have spoken. Jesus is rebuking them. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expanded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. He said, O oh fool, slow of heart to believe. Slow of heart to believe. What limitation have you placed on God? What, have you, what are the limitations that you have placed on God? The children of Israel, they didn't know who was leading them. And God told them, see, go back to that Psalm 17, verse 14. Glory to God. Psalm 78, verse 20, Psalm 78 again, verse 41. It said, the year they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. When they were leaving Egypt, God told them who would lead them. In Exodus chapter 23, I read to you verse 20. God is talking to them here. When they were about to leave Egypt. In fact, they have, they've left Egypt. They are leaving Egypt. He said, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. That angel is in capital letter. He's talking about the Holy Spirit of God. He said, Beware of him. Obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, talking about the Holy Spirit, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies, an adversary unto your adversary. For my angel shall go before you, that's the Holy Spirit, and shall bring you into the Amorites, into the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Evites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And there shall not cast their young, nor be barren in your land, for the numbers of days I will fulfill. I will send your fear before people, and I will destroy all people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all your enemies to turn their back unto thee. I mean, telling them the kind of ministry the Holy Spirit will carry for them if they listen to him. Let's see. What Isaiah says about this in Isaiah 6, 3. Isaiah 6, 3. How can someone limit God? How can you limit the Holy Spirit? Verse 9. Isaiah 3, verse 9. The Bible says, in all the affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence, that's the Holy Spirit, the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and his pity, he redeemed them, and he bared them and carried them all the days of old. As I was talking about the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, the Holy Spirit saved them, redeemed them, bared them up, carried them. But the rebel, look at it, verse 10, the rebel and vest his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them, then he remembered the days of old, Moses and the people saying, Where is he that brought them out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within them, within him? That Holy Spirit that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name. That Holy Spirit led them through the deep as an ox in the wilderness that they should not stumble. As a beast went down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord, Caused them to rest. 
So did thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Hallelujah. They limited the holy ones. So how can someone limit the holy one? Number one. Are you ready? Are you ready? Sure. Tell the person I'm ready. Number one, in your heart. In your heart. Let's go back to that psalm again. That psalm gives us a lot of clue of how they limited God. In their heart. They turn back in their heart. In verse, we started reading from verse 37. He said, for their heart was not right with him. Their heart was not right with him. How do you think in your heart? What goes on in your heart? You can limit God in your heart. It, that's where it all starts from. That's why Solomon said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You want to live a victorious life? You want to live a life that God has planned for you to live? You want to live a life that has no limits? Start with your heart. The meditation of your heart. The, the happenings of your heart. The traffic of your heart. Is anything difficult in your heart? Is anything impossible in your heart? Let's go to the book of Hebrew, chapter 3. So you see, their heart was the case. Their heart was the issue. Before, before we read that, let's go back to Psalm 78. I read to you verse 18. They tempted God in their hearts. Psalm 78 verse 18. They tempted God in their hearts by asking meat for their lust. You see, when they ask for meat in the wilderness, it's not because they wanted meat. In their heart, they thought God is giving them manna because God cannot afford meat. So, the Bible says they tempted God in their heart by asking for meat. They asked meat for their loss. Next verse. Come on, Mr. Sam, remove the echo. Yeah, they speak against God. They say, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? So, they tempted God in their heart. And that's what Paul explained to us in Hebrew. What happened to them in the wilderness? Chapter 3, verse 7. He said, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Hebrew 3, verse 7. And 9, verse 8. Hebrew 3, verse 7. He said, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. 40 years. He said that what happened in the wilderness. Now, if you look at verse 7 again, he said, wherefore, then he, started, he put a parenthesis, a bracket. So, in verse, from that place to verse 11, it's like he's trying to remind them what happened in the wilderness. So, it's, it, he put it in a parenthesis. Mathematics is called in a bracket. Just to let them know. But he will continue with that statement. Now, look at again, verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. I was grieved with that generation. And said, they do always err, where? In their hearts. They err in their hearts. And they have not known my way. So I saw in my rod that they shall not enter into my rest. They err in their heart. When you start thinking that it cannot happen, when you start thinking that it's not true, when you start thinking that the word of God cannot work, when you start thinking that it's, you can't have it, it is too much for you, it is too big for you, this kind of money cannot come to me. If I can just get one room, you are limiting God in your heart. They said, 
In verse 19, Psalm 78, they ask the question, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Can, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Emphatically, yes. Can God start with zero? Can, you, are, you are zero now. Can God move you from zero to abundance? Yes. You have to deal with your heart. You have to remove limitation from your heart. You have to remove impossibility from your heart. From the day you got born again, there is nothing impossible with you. Don't limit God with your thinking. Don't limit God with your meditation. He has told us what to meditate on. Meditate on the truth of God. Meditate on the things that are lovely, that are just, the things that are of good report. He told us in Philippians 4, verse, verse 8, what we should meditate upon. Don't meditate on what you think can never happen. You are provoking God. And what God are you provoking? The Holy Spirit of God. Because why? The Holy Spirit of God dwells in you. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. And you see the traffic of your mind and see that you don't really believe. So number one, don't limit God in your heart, as you are listening to me now, start, start thinking the right things. Hallelujah. Start thinking the right thing. Eliminate thought of poverty. Eliminate thought of lack. Eliminate thought of debt. Eliminate thought that you cannot have it. Jesus Christ said, why do thought arise in your heart? When they brought a sick man to our Lord Jesus Christ, they brought a sick man, four of his, four of his friends, brought a man in Luke chapter 5, a man that was paralyzed, and they removed the roof. And dropped the man in the presence of our Lord Jesus. And the Pharisees were looking. The Bible said that there were doctors of the law in that meeting. From different town, in, uh, towns in Jerusalem and in Israel. They came from everywhere. It was a major conference. And Jesus looked at the man. He said, your sins is forgiven thee. And we were thinking without talking. Now, who is this man that, that forgives sin? Who is this that's forgiving sin? And Jesus looked at them and said, Why do thought arise in your heart? Why do you why 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 reason ye in your heart? In Luke 5, verse 2. Why do you reason like this in your heart? Why do you reason like this in your heart? Why do you think it is impossible to have this kind of result? We say, okay, which one is easier? To say to the man, Your sins are forgiven thee. Or to say to him, rise up and walk. Nothing is difficult. Which one is easier? Make a choice. Oh, by the power of the Holy Ghost, nothing is impossible unto me. Oh, hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will not limit God with my mind. I will not limit God with my thoughts. I will not limit what he can do with my life. I can see the journey of greatness that God has called me into. I can see that I am in Christ and if I'm in Christ, there is no impossibility with me. My heart is fixed like David said. My heart is fixed trusting the Lord. All things are working together for my good. Nothing works against me. Hallelujah. I can never be disadvantaged. I can never be stranded in life. I can never lack anything, any good thing in life. All things are mine. Which one is easier? There is none that is difficult. He said, but for you to know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin, our Lord Jesus Christ said, take up your bed and go home. He has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Take up your bed and go home. You are going to get a new property now. I speak to you by the Spirit of God. Take up your bed from that house and move to your property. Move to your own house. Move to your own apartment. Nothing is difficult. You don't need to pay anything. As I said it, he said, come and buy without money. Glory to God. Don't let money control your mind. Let Jesus control your mind. Let the Holy Spirit control your mind. Let his word control your mind. Don't think of money. Think of the Holy Ghost. Many Christians think of money too much. He didn't give us money. He gave us the Holy Ghost. He said you shall receive power. You, you know, I love Jesus Christ. You know, he told his disciples, think about it. After Jesus was raised from the dead and getting ready to ascend to heaven, and he said his disciples to go all around the world and preach the gospel, 
Think about the way they will be thinking. Those disciples, how are we going to pay our transport? You know, how are we going to settle all these matters? Okay, maybe Jesus has some fun in the bank, some money in the bank he will give to us. So they all gather together to, you know, like a man want to read his final will and share his property. They thought maybe Jesus Christ, you know, this man is so powerful, maybe he has kept some money in the bank of Jerusalem for them. <laughs> they got there. Jesus Christ said, now, are you ready? They say, yes. It's okay. Lift up your hand. They lift up your hand. It's okay. He said, now, but you shall receive. They were very happy. <laughs> you shall receive. They started giving themselves high five. The next thing they heard, you shall receive power. Not cash. They were waiting to receive cash. Jesus didn't give them cash. He said, you shall receive power. After, Acts 1 verse 8. He said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's what you need, not cash. Power is what you have. Hallelujah. How I many of you have power of the Holy Ghost here? It is didn't say you shall receive cash. So stop thinking of cash. Start meditating on the power of the Holy Ghost. You think too much about money. That's why you don't have it. Think of power. Think about the Holy Spirit. He was sent to lead you. Jesus Christ sent him to you to take you to a level that no man can ever take you to. Don't limit the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have to get that thing done through money. He can get it done through another way. So number one, your heart. Number two, lack of faith. Lack of faith will cause you to limit the Holy Ghost. Lack of faith. Lack of demonstration of faith. Put it that way. Because you have faith. Once you are born again, you have faith. Look at Matthew 17. Demonstration of faith. Lack of demonstration of your faith. Matthew 17. They brought the child to the disciple of Jesus Christ and they could not ca ca cast out the devil. Verse 14, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to Jesus a certain man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for his lunatic. And so vexed, for often time he falleth into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not kill him. Then Jesus answered and said, he addressed the problem. O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him Tita, to me. Bring him to me. You have to demonstrate your faith in God's word. You have to demonstrate your faith in what he said. Glory to God. You have to demonstrate your faith. And what happened here in verse 20, 18? And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed after the child and the child was killed from that very hour. Then came the disciple to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. That's it. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, in faith, you say, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing, say nothing. Look at what the Bible says. Here. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. And that's what happened. You go back to Psalm 78. I see we pick some point in there. Why, how to limit God. Number one, through your heart. Number two, through lack of demonstration of faith. God needs you to act on faith. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. What is faith? Faith is not difficult. Faith means to believe the word of God to, and to act on it. If God says, this is who you are, that is who you are. That is faith. Very simple. You don't need to squeeze your nose. You don't need to squeeze your head. You don't need to squeeze your muzzle. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. 
And the definition that the man of God, Pastor Chris, gave to us is a faith, is a response of your human spirit to God's word. Believe God's word. Look at Psalm 78 again. In verse 22, he said, because they believed not in God. That's why they limited him. They believed not in God. I told you, he, he gave them many things. He gave them, the, they asked for deliverance. He gave them Passover. They asked for many things. They asked for food. He gave them manna for 40 years. And number 13, verse 11, he said, how long will it take these people to believe me? After all the miracles, so look at him, verse 22 here. He said, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clan from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven, man did eat angels' food. He set them meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh upon them as dust, and fed up fowls like as the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitation, so they did eat and were filled, for he gave them their own desire. But still they didn't believe him. Verse 2. For all this they sinned still, and believed not, for his wondrous work. Believe what God says about you. Go back to Hebrew 3. We stop at verse 11. So in verse 12, he said, Take it, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil act of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily. Mark that now. So daily, Hearing God's word daily is the cure for unbelief. You listen to God's word every day. Go to Pastor Craig Digital Library and listen to the message every day. Today I've listened to four messages from Pastor. Christ's purpose in me. You listen to the message every day. Man of God, Pastor Chris told us after IPPC this year, when he was having a meeting with some of us, he said that if the brethren would listen to him every day, listen to his message every day, they will prosper. So make it a plan, have a plan to listen to pastor every day so that you don't have an evil act of unbelief. It's so simple to walk in unbelief. So number two, lack of faith. Number three, empty prayers. Are you writing on the screen for that? Empty prayers. There are some prayers that are, <laughs> they limit God. Let's read James chapter 4. James 4. I read to you verse 3. He said, You ask and receive not. Yet, sorry, I think again, verse 3. You ask and receive not because you ask and miss that you may consume it upon your lust. We read it from the Passion Translation, verse 3. And if you ask, you won't receive it. Why? For you are asking with corrupt motives. Seeking only to fulfill your own selfish desires. The Passion Translation. So, in empty prayers. There are three kinds of prayers that will not cause you, know, you to have results. Number one, by not using the tools of prayers. 
If you don't use the tools of prayers, there are tools of prayers. The man of God, Pastor Chris, has taught us about tools of prayers. Pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. The Bible says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For our bet in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. If you don't speak in tongues regularly, you will be limiting God. There's so much God wants to do with your life. If you don't speak in tongues regularly, voraciously, and, and this thing will pain God. Like, remember, as I said, the word limit. It will pain God because God wants to do so much with your life. God wants to shine with you. God wants to reign with you. Jesus Christ said, by this, I may know that you are my disciple if you bear much fruit. So when you have much result, God is glorified. But now there's a Christian born again for 20 years, but no progress. God is pain. Why? Because that Christian is limiting God. He's not using the tools of prayer. Paul said in Ephesians 6, verse 18, he said, pray always with all prayers and supplications in the spirit. He didn't say pray once in a week. He said pray always. Pray always. With all prayers and supplications in the spirit. Not speaking in tongues, Rabbi Shantala, Rabbi, five minutes. No. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. The man of God says, as we speak in tongues, we enter into incantations. So when you don't use the tools of prayer, you don't get the result. Some people give the impression that they pray, meanwhile they don't pray. When I see a Christian complaining about life, about his job, about his family, about his finances, he has not been praying in the spirit. He has not been praying in tongues. That's how you know them. <laughs> because when you pray in tongues, when you come out of there, you are edified. Glory to God. But said that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, edify himself. Verse 4, he edify himself. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, edify himself, build himself. Charge himself, develop himself, reconstruct himself, renovate himself, build himself. You can't speak in tongues long enough and come out angry and come out with bitterness and come out without a vision, without a clarity of purpose. So, prayers, empty prayers. I said, under that, by not using the tools of prayer, under that, number two, under that, the way we, do, we pray also. We pray for our own desire instead of the will of God. See? And that's what the man of God, Pastor Christ, has been teaching us. And some Christians are still making the same mistake. Pastor said before COVID, we pray selfish prayers. We pray for our needs. We pray for our desires. But we don't, we don't understand what God says. The pastor began to redirect our mind to 1 Timothy 2 verse 1. He said, first of all, 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 prayers and supplications, intercessions, giving of thanks, should be made for all men. First of all, for kings and for all that are in authority. And what we follow that, we that are praying, that we, we that are praying, may lead a quiet and prosperous life, a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. But many people want to pray for peace in their lives. They are praying for peace in their life, peace, in, peace for themselves and their family without doing what God said we should do. So the are two reasons. The way we pray. You limit God when you start praying by, for yourself first. He said, this boy has not learned his lesson. This sister has not learned his lesson. That is not the focus. You don't have a problem with grace. You don't have a problem with prosperity. You don't have a problem with success. No, no. God provided, I show you what God did for the children of Israel. He provided everything for them. They want water, he gave them a rock full of water. They want food, he gave them uh, manna for 40 years. They asked for meat, he gave them meat for one month. In one day.
So they limit God the way they pray. Your prayer can limit God. You will think you are praying very well, but you are limiting God because you are not making the first thing first. The first thing is to pray for nations, pray for leaders. Even when you are praying privately, many of our prayers are selfish prayer. We are speaking in tongues so that we can just bless ourselves. We are speaking in tongues so that our church can grow. We are speaking in tongues so that things can happen to us. But that's what God said. Why can't you do what God said? He said, pray first for leaders. And that's when I have a virtual fervent prayer here. That's all I do. And when I'm through praying for everybody like that, the next last five minutes, a prophetic word will come out. Last five minutes, a word will be given that will set to everything about me for a long time. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't need to pray about me. Hallelujah. Because I'm not a focus. I am an agent of God. And I'm, I am an agent of change into my world. Lift up your hand if you are here. Something is happening in this place. Every limitation is leaving you. Oh, by the power of the Holy Ghost. God is going to do mighty works in our midst. Am I communicating to somebody here? Hallelujah. And the third reason in the prayer is it's become stingy in our prayers. When you are praying and you are stingy in that prayer, it's all about you. It's all about you. The children of Israel didn't understand the, fo the focus of God. They didn't understand the plan of God. The plan of God is not about the nation of Israel. The plan of God is to bring Jesus. All that he was doing from them, from Abraham, through the scripture in the Old Testament, was to bring Jesus. The reason why he gave them the law was to bring the, our Lord Jesus. Paul has to explain that to them. They talk about, about Israel. It's not about Israel. It's about Jesus. Because God said it in the garden. When the, woman, when the woman was deceived, God said to serpent that the seed of the woman shall bruise your head. God announced Jesus will be born. God announced Jesus will come and redeem man from destruction. And so when the whole world, when devil went and deceived the whole world, God went to look for one man who would believe him. And he found Abraham. And through Abraham, his goal was to bring Jesus. So everything that was going through the life of the children of Israel, they didn't understand. It was all about Jesus. And the same thing with you as a Christian. Everything that is going on in your life is to bring Jesus out of you. Once you take your eyes away from Jesus, you start bringing in limitation. He is Lord of all. And the Holy Spirit will not work with you Unless that thing will glorify Jesus. He came to glorify Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Am I communicating to somebody here? Oh, because we are live, we're just going to round up shortly. No matter, no matter, no matter what? How I many have I given you now? I've given you three, okay? I said number one, their heart. Number two, lack of faith. Number three, what's number three? Empty prayers. Number four, their confession. Their confession. Their confession. They were speaking against God. We read it, Psalm 17, verse 19. Their confession. Verse 19. Verse 19. Yeah, they speak against God. They speak against God. You go back to Hebrew 3. We read verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost here today, if you hear his voice, Remember, we read that. But let's go to the beginning when he began to talk. He said, Wherefore, verse 1, chapter 3, chapter 3, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession or confession, Christ Jesus. 
Christ Jesus is the apostle and the high priest of our confession. He came to show us how to talk. You cannot confess inability. You, cannot, you are not allowed, once you are born again, you cannot say again, I don't have. Even if there is no money in your pocket. Because Jesus Christ needs your confession. In the Old Testament, the priests, the high priests, used animals from the people. The high priest doesn't buy animals for people. The high priest doesn't give the children of Israel animal. The children of Israel would bring their animal according to God's prescription and give it to the high priest. And the high priest will offer it for them as sacrifice. So also in the New Testament. God gave us what to say. So you bring words to Jesus. He's the high priest of your confession. He's the high priest of our confession. He wants us to speak the word. He wants us to speak reality. He wants us to confess what the word says we have, we are, and we can do. Your confession can limit God. Your confession can limit the grace of God on your life. Your confession can limit the ministry of the Holy Spirit on your life. Your confession can stop grace from working in your life. You, you read the same Hebrew for the same Hebrew while he was addressing them about their unbelief in verse 11, Hebrews 4, verse 11, he said, let us labor therefore to enter into that race, lest any man should fall after the same example of unbelief, the children of Israel, they fall. Why? He said, they didn't know that the word of God is quick and powerful. Verse 12. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing the son of souls and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and the word of God is a designer of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Neither is there any creature, the word of God, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in the sight of God's world. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of the world with whom we have to do. Seeing then, verse 13, you see, he told us the importance of the world. The children of Israel could not enjoy the grace of God because they didn't understand the importance of words. The man of God, Pastor Chris, when he came to Ghana on this same pulpit, right in this auditorium, I will never forget it. Pastor said, the greatest asset you have in the world, the greatest asset you have in the world is not money, is not property, is not cars. The greatest asset we have in the world is words. Words are your greatest asset. Your confession. Your confession will destroy your future if you don't confess rightly. It will go ahead of you and limit what God will do next year. Your confession will limit what God will do. And this thing pain God. Remember I said limit. It pain God that you are talking like this. Because he knows what will happen. You will limit his grace. You will limit his favor. So he says, seeing then that we have a great high priest. We have a great high priest that is passed into heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. King James used the word profession. Our confession. Hold fast to your confession. What is confession? Speaking the same thing in agreement with God. I'm agreeing with God. I will not disagree with God. If God says all things are mine, all things are mine. If God says I can do all things, I can do all things. If God says no weapon formed against me shall prosper, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. If God says I have eternal life, I have eternal life. If God says, I am the head and not the tail, I am the head and not the tail. I speak the same thing in agreement with God. I'm a success. Lift up your hands if you are here. Say, Holy Ghost, I'm a success. He needs you to speak right. The Spirit of God needs us to speak right. He said, they vest the Holy Spirit of God. We read in Isaiah 6, 3, verse 10. They vest him. Because they, they spoke wrongly. They spoke contrary to what God said.
Seeing them, we have a great high priest that is passing to heaven. Let us, son of, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession. The same thing God said to them in the book of Malachi. The book of Malachi, chapter 3. These ones, they give, they give, and they complain about giving, and God came. Verse 13. He said, your words have been stout against me, said the Lord. In verse 10, he talked about tithing. In verse 11, he said, I will reboot the devourer for your sake. They shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. In verse 12, he said, all nations shall call you blessed. He said, they should bring their tithes and offering. And he told them the things that will happen. This brother has given his offering. This brother has given his first fruit. This sister has given her first fruit. She has given her tithe. But why is she not prospering? She's paying, saying things contrary to God. Your words will destroy your seed. Your word will destroy your harvest. He said, all nations, verse 12, Malachi 3, all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Then God said, your words have been stout against me, said the Lord. Yet you say, when have we spoken so much against thee? Verse 14, he said, you have said, God heard them, you have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? What ordinance? The ordinance of tithe and offering. And that we have walked monthly before the Lord of hosts. And now we call the wicked people happy. We care that we, we yea, they that walk wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. But God says, For those that fear the Lord, they speak often, you see, they are his words, often one to another. And the Lord acting and heard it, and the book of remembrance was written before him. For them that fear the Lord and thought upon his name. A book of remembrance is written. Uh, it's called a book of memoria. Your words have been recorded. Don't limit God. Talk so big. The man of God, Pastor Chris, said, there's no law against thinking big. Think big and talk big. Hallelujah. And God says in verse 17, and they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. Then shall you return and descend between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serve God and him that serve him not. Hallelujah. 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 I walk in victory. I walk in surplus. Solomon said the same thing. In Proverbs 6, verse 2, he said, Thou art snared with the words of your mouth. Thou art taken with the words of your mouth. The words of your mouth. You say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I can do all things. I can do all things. Even when you are looking so weak, I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I can do all things. I can do all things. Hallelujah. I can do all things. And that's all we can take today. Lift up your hand before the Lord. I can do all things. Don't limit God. Glory to God. Don't limit him at all. Hallelujah. Don't limit God. There's a special blessing for you today. If you can just open your mouth, you have an high priest that is passing to heavens. Jesus Christ, stand up on your feet at this time. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, lift up your hand before the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, glory to God. He's waiting for you to speak. He's waiting for you to talk. He's the high priest of your confession. He's waiting for you to utter those words. Glory to God. He's waiting for you. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you to speak those words. Hallelujah. Those words that glorify Jesus. Lift up your hand before the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. My life is full of testimonies. My life is full of the grace of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My life is full of the grace of God. Glory to God. He said, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Lift up your hand and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I reign in this life. I flourish in this life. Hallelujah. I flourish, I shine in this life. Glory to God. The word of God is working in my spirit. The word of God is working in my soul. The word of God is working in my body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm rooted and grounded in Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Jesus is my life. Hallelujah. I'm a living, active child of God. The word of God is living and active in me. Lift up your hand, lift up your voice, and go ahead and speak the word. 
Hallelujah. I'm fruitful and productive. Glory to God. I'm fruitful and productive. I'm hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The, the, the divine life is at work in me. Divinity is at work in me. In every fiber of my being. In every bone of my body. In every cell of my blood. Divinity is at work in me. Don't limit God. Don't limit God. Oh, hallelujah. All things are yours. All things are yours. Now begin to prophesy. Speak ahead of time. Say in the name of the Lord Jesus, that job is mine. That business is mine. That house is mine. That accommodation is mine. Speak now. Because all things are yours. All things are yours. Hallelujah. You are participating anywhere in the world. The grace of God is active now. The grace of God is working now. Say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I flourish like a palm tree. I grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Peter said the same thing. I'm full of glory. I'm full of grace. I'm full of Christ. I'm full of life. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is my Lord. Hallelujah. He's the Lord of my life. He's the Lord of my spirit. He's the Lord of my soul. He's the Lord of my body. Lift up your hands and pronounce the Lordship of Jesus. Pronounce the Lordship of Jesus. Go ahead now. Pronounce the Lordship of Jesus. Listen, the greatest weapon against Satan is the word of God. The greatest weapon against Satan is the word of God. That's what Jesus used. Jesus said to Satan in Matthew 4, it is written, it is written, it is written. Then he said, it is said. Lift up your hand. If there are devices against you, use the word. He said the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your hand. The word of God penetrates your body. Locate sickness, disease, infirmity, and pain. And dismantle them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand. Speak in the tongues. Speak the word. Speak what has been written. David said in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I've come, O oh Lord, to do your will. Jesus came and quoted it. Paul came and quoted it. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Pastor Biotin Lawa will do your will. Speak in tongues. Use the word. In 1 Peter 3 verse 10, he said, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. In 1 Peter 3 verse 10, and his lips that they speak no guile. Lift up your hands now. Begin to prophesy. That means speak God's word. Speak God's word. Into your life, into your future, into your home. Pronounce what tomorrow will be like. Pronounce what tomorrow, the next 24 hours will be like. Organize your hearts. Believe God's word. Oh, speak in tongues. Lift those hands. Oh, don't limit him. Don't limit him at all. Don't limit the Holy One of Israel. Don't limit the Holy Ghost. No limit to your progress. No limit to your success. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Say there's no limit to what I can do. There's no limit to my growth. I'm rooted in Christ. I'm alive in Him.
Look at Psalm 119. Remain standing as you close. Psalm 119, verse 96. King James says, I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. Let's read it from the Passion Translation. You speak the word. He says, I have learned that there is nothing perfect in this imperfect world except your words. Psalm 119, verse 96, the Passion Translation. He says, I have learned that there is nothing perfect in this imperfect world except your words. So only God's word is perfect in this world. For they bring such fantastic freedom into my life. Lift up your hands. Fantastic graces into your life. Fantastic blessings into your life. Speak in tongues. Declare God's word. Believe God's word. Believe God's word. Believe God's word. Agree with him. Agree with the word. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Understand that if you don't speak the word of God, devil will know. Devil knows when a Christian is not making confessions. That means in the life of that Christian, there's vacancy somewhere in his life for the devil to come in. He can come into the person's health. He can come into hiding in his finances. He can be hiding in his house and be destroying things because that person is not speaking God's word. He's not making confession. That's why when you read Rhapsody of Realities, there's daily confession. It's either there's a prayer or there's a confession. Because confession is too important. He said, I have learned that there is nothing perfect in this imperfect world except your words. For they bring such fantastic freedom into my life. And now in the name of Jesus, I bring grace into your life for you. I bring you new graces in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bring you new graces into your business graces into your business, receive it now. I bring you new graces into your home in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I come against the works and the lies of Satan directed against your family, directed against your job, directed against your business. I rebook it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pronounce blessings upon you. I bless your home. I bless your family. I bless your job. I bless your business. I command the blessings of heaven to rest upon your house from this moment in the name of the Lord Jesus you will produce results you will produce results you will produce results you will move from glory to glory there is no limit to your success there is no limit to your success from today the spirit of God leads you on a journey of victory to victory I say on a journey of grace to grace you will not stumble you will not fail you will not fall you will not be defeated you will not be defeated you will never be killed because the life of God is in you. I speak life into your body. I speak life into your bones. I speak life into your cell. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak life into your kidney. I speak life into your heart. No more heart trouble. I rebuke the heart trouble. I rebuke the cancerous growths. I rebuke them from your body now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the demon of sickness to leave you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command your body to be healed. Be healed in your body. Be healed in your bones. Be healed in your blood. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be made whole. I remove the back pain. I command that pain to leave your body now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak to your bones. I speak to your kneecap. I command your kneecap to be healed. Be healed now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, woman stand up from that bed. You are here. Man, you are here. You are healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Raise your hand now. You are healing in the name of Jesus. No pain in your body. No pain in your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. 
be healed in your body. Lift up your hands. The blessings of the Lord fill your home. The blessings of the Lord fill your family. You know, Monday after I finished praying, the Lord spoke to me. As I entered my office, Monday after the 12 o'clock prayer, the Lord spoke to me. He said, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. In Joshua 1 verse 5. He said, as I am with the man of God, Pastor Chris, so will I be with you, Pastor Biodulawa. I shouted in my office and said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. As God is with our man of God, Pastor Chris, so is he with me. All oh, the grace of God working in the life of my pastor is working in my life. Say the same thing. Make your confession. As I was with Moses, God said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As I was with David, so I will be with Pastor Biotun Lawa. As I was with Solomon, so I will be with Pastor Biotun Lawa. As I was with Paul, so I will be with Pastor Biotun Lawa. As I was with the man of God, Pastor Chris, as I am with the man of God, Pastor Chris, so will I be with Pastor Biotun Lawa. Lift up your voice and say the same thing. Take this grace home. Take this grace home. Take this grace home. Take this grace home. Somebody has been healed in your right eye. The right eye has been swelling with water coming out regularly. The pain is gone. The swelling is gone. The liquid dry up immediately. And you are healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see somebody here also. You're here. You have some this liquid coming out from your ear. So many liquids are drying up from people's body now. You are healed. That liquid is gone. Go from him in the name of Jesus. It's gone. It's gone. Glory to God. As I was with the man of God, as I am with the man of God, Pastor Chris, so am I with Pastor Biodulawa. Shout a big hallelujah. Every grace I see in my pastor, I see it in my life. Say the same thing. Make those confessions. Every grace I see in my pastor, Pastor Chris, I see it in my life. As I am with my God, Pastor Chris, so am I with you, Pastor Biotulawa. God told me on Monday. As I finish praying, lift up your beautiful hands. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We want to thank all of you participating online, glory to God. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back again next week. This is our first one. I will be back again next week Wednesday. Praise God. And the word of God will come to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Give him praise at this moment. Give him praise at this moment. Remove the limitation from your mind. Remove the limitation from your heart as far as your eyes can see. Believe God and his word. Accept what he said. Don't have an evil heart of unbelief. That money is coming to you. That money that you want to pay for your house rent is coming to you. It's coming to you free. You will not borrow to pay for that house rent. That money comes to you now. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, give the Lord a shout. Give him praise at this moment. You may have your seat. At this time, I want us to close our eyes. Wherever you are participating from, if you have not been born again, this is the moment to be born again. If you have not given your heart to Jesus, this is the moment. Wherever you are, you want to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and enjoy the blessings of Christ. I want to say these words after me. Say, Oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So I believe that Jesus died for me. He was buried for me. And God raised Jesus from the dead for my justification. Say right now, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life and I receive the remission of my sins through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ say so now I receive the life and the nature of God into my spirit say so I receive eternal life 
into my spirit. See, according to the word of God, I am born again. I'm a child of God. I'm a new creation from this day onward. Say from today and for all time, God is my father. Say thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And I pray for all of you that made that confession with me that from today, you will walk in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You will walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God will lead and guide you every day and bring you understanding of his word and make you a testimony of the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ in your life. I pray for you that you will be rooted and grounded in the house of God and that your life will be a light for others to follow. I pray for you now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. Send us a testimony if you receive a miracle or healing. The power of God just went out. Send us a testimony. Our email address will be on the screen. Let us know what the Lord has done for you. Send us a testimony. And as this broadcast has blessed you, send us a testimony as well. We would like to hear from you and celebrate your victory with you. We will be back next week Sunday. Next week Wednesday, sorry. And I will continue sharing God's word with you. Glory to God. Glory to God. At this moment, you can go ahead and honor the Lord with your offerings. Why the choir give us? The, not the choir now. The instrumentalists play for us. Go ahead and give your offerings. Those of you that are here as well. Go ahead and give your offerings. We want to give for Thanksgiving. Wherever you are participating from, you just go ahead and give it.
Hallelujah. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every seed, every offering given is blessed and sanctified. And the power of the Holy Ghost continually multiply your seed sown and grant you more and more grace to do more. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The power of God is invoked upon all your givings and it will come back to you a thousand times in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even as all the offerings and tithes and oblations come into the house of God, the power of God is invoked upon it to multiply and prosper in the hands of the church for the expansion of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, not only in the nation of Ghana, but all around the world. The gospel has committed to our man of God, Pastor Chris. It prosper in every nation in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shout a big amen. Glory to God. We just take a few announcements and we close. Remember tomorrow, IPPC, your city begins tomorrow. You don't want to miss anything. All our senior pastors, members of the CEC, will be sharing with, with, with us tomorrow. And even our man of God, Pastor Chris, also will be sharing with us. So make sure you are here by 6 p.m. We have Thursday. And even from tomorrow, we'll start presenting our annual award ceremony. Uh, we have a lot of awards to give, so we'll need more than three days to do that. So all various partnership arms, both ministry and zonal partnership arms, we will be recognizing all our top partners of various arms from tomorrow. So I want to encourage you to be here and be part of what we're going to do during this weekend. Now on Sunday, we have a code Rabba service. Glory to God. We're going wild for God conference. All code Rabba cells, all Syria hunters must be in church with their souls on Sunday. And also this Sunday is a combined service. Service is 8 o'clock. And then we'll also be having a second Thanksgiving service. That's not a brief one, but not that long like last week Sunday. All our churches will be coming. All our pastors will be coming to do their Thanksgiving. And all our PCFs will be coming as a group for their Thanksgiving this coming Sunday. And we'll all together will be thanking God for our zone and our region. And then we'll also do a special Thanksgiving on behalf of our man of God, Pastor Chris. Glory to God. Remember also some of the programs we have this weekend. Global Faith Miracle Seminar with the Healing School is this Saturday and Sunday. Our link is on the screen. You can participate using our virtual link. Register and send the link to everybody. Those who are sick, those who need healing, send the link to them. And we will bring the link on the screen. Then the link, we will bring uh, the link, register yourself on the link, and then participate on Saturday and on Sunday. The Global Faith Miracle Seminar from the Healing School. On Saturday, 24th December, we have a children's Christmas party. And then on Saturday, 24th December as well, we have sent portions. Sent portions. And the same Saturday, 24th December, we have a Christmas carol service with our man of God, Pastor Chris. Christmas Eve service, not carol. Christmas Eve service with Pastor Chris. All on Saturday, 24th December. You don't want to miss it for anything. Glory to God. Now, next week, Wednesday, is. Even though we are streaming, it's our carol service. And the choir, they are already getting ready for us. So next week, Wednesday, 21st, is our carol service. And the choir already, uh, they have a lot of concept. You want to be there. You want to be part of it. And I want to encourage everybody to join us for carol service next week, Wednesday. Praise the Lord. We have our prison outreach. And we have campaign this Christmas to the prisons in Ghana. We're going to a lot of prisons in Ghana. And we want you to make some donation of non-perishable items. So if you go to the prison outreach stand outside in the, in the, in the, outside the auditorium, they will show you the list of non-perishable items that we want to take to, to the prison and give the prisoners. On Sunday, the prison outreach brought some people that were released from the prison to come and see me. They were in church on Sunday. Let's clap. They came for Thanksgiving. So the prison outreach is, is strong. They are working. And they are going to about seven prisons for Angel at Christmas to the prisons. 
will take rhapsody to them and they want to give them some non-perishable items. So kindly visit the prison outreach stand outside the church, outside the hall, and see what you can be part of it. Yesterday, during the Ephesians of Heaven prayer, we pray against the demon that caused the currency and poverty in Ghana. How many of you watched that prayer? Then, I spent time to pray about it during the Ephesians of Heaven prayer yesterday. And then from yesterday to today, the, that, the, the value of city just went up. <laughs> yesterday, we dealt with it in prayers. And this morning, the rate just dropped almost 50%. Deacon, am I right? Now, I, 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 somebody sent me a post and said that Ghana, is the, the, Ghana City is not the best performing currency as of today. Well, I give the Lord a shout. But you see, the Bible said the devil came to steal but to kill and to destroy. In the last three months, that currency has destroyed many people's finances because they stole a lot of money with that currency. I mean, with the exchange rate. So now that it is dropping and it will keep dropping, we are praying and it will keep dropping. And I told you that we are going to have a, a praise festival at the financial center. Do you remember? That's where we are going for praise festival on the 26th. Because God told me to go there. All those banks that surrounded us, when we are through, all the demons that hide inside there will come out. There will be money in this country after that festival. Shout a big hallelujah. So Ghana, we are watching, we are praying, and we will not allow the devil to steal our money. Stand up on your feet, it's time to go you want to give your tithes, you can come forward as we close. Our partnership, you can come forward. And drop it in the offering box. Go ahead and drop it. Drop it in the offering box. You want to give your thanksgiving. Are you glad you came for service today? Then lift up your hands and thank the Lord as we close. I want to thank Love World SP. We will be a reliable partner with you this year. And you can count on our partnership. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will, are we going to support Love Word SP? Yeah, we're going to support Love Word SP in Lagos. We're going to support them in partnership. They are carrying this program live and free. I think we should support them. What do you think? So make sure you partner with Love Word SP. S support them. And we will definitely support them, support them this year. And we will do far, far more than we did last year by the power of the Holy Spirit. You all get home safely in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold your neighbor's hand and share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Share your brethren. I love you all.